This is step six from the Seven Steps to Heaven, uh, which is available at LearnJazzStandards.com, a website put together by Camden Hughes. And uh, if you're watching this at that website, then all of those steps are enumerated right underneath the video. And in some of the earlier videos, I uh, led you up to these particular steps where you would already have to have the tune under your fingers, really have the chord progressions down, uh, know what the melody is, and uh, not really having to be thinking consciously of where you are in the place of the tune. Those are the earlier steps that you're taking care of, all of that material. Step six, if you don't have the handout in front of you, uh, states work on varying articulation by playing through the tune entirely in, in legato style, so smooth, connected, and then again in a marcato style, so using more articulation, separating the notes. Experience the extremes of each method of attack and work to integrate them more naturally into your playing style. This is very similar to steps four and five, uh, which were dealing with density, uh, filling up all of the space, uh, and you'll be playing sort of in a legato manner if you're playing strings of eighth notes, especially in a swing style. And, uh, and then step five was using more space, which you will be varying the articulation a little bit. Here are your things specifically of uh, using the articulation in in the playing in the legato style, I found when I was early starting out and would hear recordings of myself back, this is something I realized I was doing too much. And I've even heard some professional players where sometimes I, need, I would like to hear more variation in articulation. Uh, a, a great master of this is Sonny Rollins. Sonny Rollins is great at really having a wide variety of ways of articulating the phrase. So if you're working in a legato, and we play along with, uh, again, we're using all the things you are, through all of these video examples uh, by Jerome Kern. And that's available at LearnJazzStandards.com. There's a play-along track that you can try all of these ideas with. This is uh, one of the standard Jamie Eversall play-alongs for music. Two, Here's the legato one, two, three, style. Four. So that's one, uh, just really one extreme. And you'll hear sometimes players playing a little too much that way all the time. You want to kind of get as much variety uh, in your playing as possible. So hearing it without the play along, I'm using a very light tongue, so more of a do 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 type of, barely making contact with the reed, or actually just slurring a lot. And it does have a feeling of like you're slipping along on a sheet of ice. You know, sometimes the time feels a little squirrely when you're doing that. I find sometimes with younger players they'll tend to err to this end because you're usually trying to connect and get as smooth as possible and there's a tendency to do that a lot of times in big band playing too is to when you're articulating especially in swing the eighth notes they tend to be very legato very connected so the extreme of that the other would be to articulate the notes a little bit more cleanly so that you're making more contact with the reed and um, i do that with the play along so you can get the idea one two one two three four <laughs> So again, without the play along playing in the back, there's much more, you know, attack, much more contact being made with the reed. And 
think you get a little like yakety sacks after a certain point. There's a little too much all the way through there. Uh, but again, this is a practice technique. You're trying to for force yourself into consciously thinking of the extremes of a very legato attack and then a very marcato at at attack on the other end. And then eventually maybe trying to mix these a little bit more. So you're, these sometimes I think, especially with the articulation, it becomes something that you're not that aware of until you hear recordings. I knew early on in, in my development I would hear recordings back and just go, oh man, tongue for once, will you? Because it would just be this kind of like, it just felt like the time was uh, just, again, skating on ice, just kind of slipping around a little bit, not really locking in. And eventually you could really work these both going back and forth, maybe even taking uh, eight bars at a time, where you're thinking, I'm going to play legato and marcato. And again, these are things you really don't want to be thinking of when you are actually playing. Uh, ideally, you're thinking really of nothing except listening to the other players around you. But this is a way of concentrating on certain elements. So you can start legato. Uh, we'll do it with the metronome here, keep ourselves honest here. that you're really thinking, the only thing you're thinking about, that's why the earlier steps really have to be under your fingers. Steps one and two, we're talking about learning the form, being able to play through. Making sure that you have that down, you know what the chord progressions are, you know what your form is, because to have that, uh, you're really shifting your consciousness to really thinking of just playing in a legato style, playing a marcato style, you're putting the emphasis on how much I'm tonguing. I'm thinking more how much I'm tonguing or how little I'm tonguing instead of uh, what chord is that, uh, where am I at the bridge yet. You know, that has to be taken care of in the earlier steps really before you can go to these later steps where you're dealing with uh, density, space, uh, articulation and so forth. So uh, that covers step six of the seven steps to heaven.